Hey everyone, Digital David here today. In this episode of Newegg Now, I'm gonna be unboxing and reviewing the ASUS Tough Gaming VG1B Series Curved Gaming Monitor. Shout out to the folks over at Newegg for sending me this monitor to review. If you're interested in this product, the link to it will be in my video description below. Please go ahead and check it out there. You can see how the product looks right here and how it comes in a nice retail box. We can learn from this side, it's 31.5 inches for the screen size. On this side of the box, we get our model number. It's VG32VQ1B, 165 Hertz, 2560 by 1440 resolution. That's WQHD, wide quad high definition, 120% sRGB for the color gamut, one millisecond response time, 1500R for the curvature of the screen, and it does have HDR and AMD FreeSync. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the package contents. Here are all the package contents besides the monitor itself. First up, you can see a customer service and contact card followed by our quick start guide and setup instructions right here. Then you can see we have our power supply cable, our display port cable, and our HDMI cable. Then last but not least, you can see the stand itself right here for the monitor with nice grip feet on the back side of it. And then you can see how we're gonna just gently screw it in place to the monitor itself. So now let's go ahead, let's look at the monitor. Now you can see the monitor right here. We have the Asus logo and branding on the back side with a Visa mount. Off to the left, you can see right here, we have our menu button, navigation wheel, and controls. Off to the right, we have our Kensington security lock. Then we can gently flip it up so you guys can see. We have our power plug right there. Two HDMI 2.0 ports, one display port 1.2, and a headphone jack. We can now flip the monitor around to the front side. and You can see what that looks like right here. So 31.5 inches and that 1500R curvature. Now let's go ahead, let's get the stand installed. Installation's very simple and straightforward. Just go ahead, line up the two pieces together as shown, just like that. Then you're just gonna finger tighten it into place just like we're doing right here. You can use a Phillips head or flathead screwdriver if you want, but with the included handle, you can get it nice and tight and snug right there. So now we're ready to stand the monitor up and look at the options that we get with this base. So with the monitor upright, you can see now that we can adjust the tilt with the included stand. So that's our max tilt right there. We can also adjust the monitor some to the left and to the right, so we do get some pivot and rotations right there. In regards to the height, it's at a fixed height. There is no height adjustment with the included stand. Now let's go ahead, let's power it on and look at the menu settings. Now with the monitor powered on, let's go ahead, let's pull up our menu settings. So you can see we have a couple different options right here and some quick shortcuts with the buttons on the back. So the first one's our power button. The second one brings us to our game visual. The third one brings us to game plus if we wanna add some additional features to the screen. The fourth one's an X button to go back to exit out. And then we have our menu scroll wheel right here. So first up, you can see from the settings, we have the gaming tab. We can choose overdrive settings, free sync, game plus, and game visual. You may notice some settings are grayed out depending on the mode and profile that you're in. But in this case, you can see we have lots of different game visual modes right here depending on the game you're playing and what you're after in regards to looks for this display. You can see Game Plus right here too. We had that quick shortcut as well. And then we can go back, our next tab is Image. Same thing, some options will be grayed out, but you can adjust those according to the profile and settings that you want. In this case, we can still change brightness and contrast. HDR is grayed out. You have to turn HDR on from your Windows 10 computer, then you'll have access to a couple modes for HDR. You can see right here, we got Vivid Pixel, ASCR, Blue Light Filter. We can adjust the level there. We can go to the next tab, our color setting. So color temp, saturation, skin tone. Then you can see our input selection. Again, two HDMI 2.0s and one DisplayPort 1.2. You can see our favorites tab with shortcuts, customized settings as well. Then we have our settings tab right here. We can adjust language, sound. So here's our sound settings. We can mute it or have it at a volume level of 50. For now, that's fine for the built-in speakers. Eco mode, on or off, 
power indicator, power key lock, key lock, OSD setup, information, and all reset settings right here. We can choose to go back to factory defaults if we want. So that's a quick look at the menu settings. Now let's go ahead, let's look at the Windows settings. So looking at the Windows 10 settings, you can see right here, correctly identified our monitor. We're using the RTX 3070. Our desktop resolution is 2560 by 1440. And there's our refresh rate, 164.847 Hertz. So really close to the 165 Hertz that's advertised. Really quick guys, if we go back to the settings, I just wanna point out again, there's your toggle to turn HDR on and off for this monitor. Now let's go ahead, let's conduct our motion test. So now you can see we got the Blur Busters test online right now and ready to go. We got three different options right here for us. 41 FPS, 83 FPS, and then 165 FPS at the top. And again, we have 165 Hertz refresh rate. So obviously the 165 FPS looks fantastic. It's definitely the best out of these three. Very, very smooth. Everything looks great. I'm very happy with the quality of the motion playback and movement that we get, even just conducting this simple test. Now I'm conducting that same test again. This time we turned FreeSync off so we could enable the built-in extreme low motion blur settings within the monitor itself. We're using the turbo settings right now. Honestly, in regards to the 165 FPS, I can't tell the difference with that turned on or off. So with FreeSync turned on or off and enabling this, but I actually think I might be able to notice a slight difference at the lower FPSs, 41 and 83, look slightly better to me. I've tried it in the turbo in the standard mode and I think I've seen very similar results with both, but we do have two options with extreme low motion blur built right into this monitor. But again, if you want to use that, you'll have to turn FreeSync off. So this monitor is equipped with built-in speakers, which is really a nice feature. Even if you don't plan on using them, it's better to have them and not need them than need them and not have them. So we have the volume set to 100. So you can see we have the volume at 100 right here. Let's go ahead, let's play a couple seconds of the song. So you guys can listen in to hear how everything sounds. You know, it actually packs a decent punch for built-in speakers to a monitor. Obviously, if you have your own gaming setup with your own speakers, you're definitely gonna wanna use those. But if you don't, and you just want some quick, easy speakers, then you're gonna be very happy with the speaker quality coming out of this monitor. All right, so first up, you can see we're playing Fortnite right here. Check it out. We got medium settings with our Intel i9-9900K and our RTX 3070. So we got our full resolution 2560 by 1440 with 165 FPS. You can see our counter up here. We're close to that right now, 162, 163. It's cycling through right there. So far, everything looks great. Very smooth gameplay and footage right here. Kill Stealer! Got him! Got him! Got him! Got him.
Got him! And for the dub! Alright, must be the monitor. Now you can see we're playing Warzone right here with our 2560 by 1440 resolution. Trying to get 165 FPS, but at that resolution, our 3070 won't be able to push this game out. And you can see our counter right there. A lot of activity going on. Take a look at the gameplay though. Really beautiful footage on this monitor. Everything looks great. Love the 2K resolution. Very fluid motion. Got him. Last but not least, we're playing one of my favorite games, Fall Guys. You can see with our frame counter, we're getting close to 165 FPS at our max 2K resolution. Everything looks really good, which is what I expect for a game like this with its graphics. Oh, just made it there. And we're in! I love watching everybody here as they grief each other. It's so fun. Oh! Griefer got griefed. <laughs> See how we can do. See if we can get that crown. Oh, shoot.
overall, I've had a great experience gaming on this monitor. It really is a top-notch choice. Let me leave you with my final thoughts, some of the things I really like about it and some things I want to see improved in the future. First up, the things I really like about it have to deal with all the great tech specs that we get. 2K resolution, 165 hertz refresh rate, one millisecond response time, HDR10, and we have built-in speakers. I'm also really happy with the screen size at 31.5 inches. It's really an enjoyable viewing experience, especially with that slight curve at 1500R. It does not take away from the viewing experience. As someone who's used 32 inch monitors with and without the curve, I definitely prefer them with that nice slight curve. Now let me tell you some of the things I'd like to see improved in the future. The first one up is the monitor brightness. This is probably the biggest complaint I have with it, but I'm very picky when it comes to monitor brightness. I've never come across a monitor that was too bright. I just wish monitors were so bright you had to turn them down as opposed to so dim that you had to turn them up. The second thing that I think they're really missing on this monitor has to do with the stand. I'm really sad that there's no height adjustment. It's a really solid base with our rotation and our tilt, but I'm disappointed that we don't have any height adjustment. On that note though, it is Visa mount compatible. So if you have your own stand or swing arm or something like that, where you wanna mount it to the wall, you'll be all set. So I understand why stands typically don't come with all the features, because I think a lot of you, and myself included, we don't even use the stands. But if you're counting on using the stand, just be aware that you will have to use it at this height, unless you stack some books under it or something like that, you're stuck at this height with your desk and your setup. Also, some other things I'd like to see in the future, USB 3.0 so we can plug our controller, keyboard, mouse directly into the monitor. And I'd like to see RGB light integration with this monitor. Some along the front, the back side, the stand, that sort of thing. It'd be really nice if we had some RGB lights. But overall, a solid choice if you're in the market for a gaming monitor. Well, that concludes our video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget the product link will be in our video description below. Please go ahead, check it out and do your shopping from there. Any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you. So we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support. While you're at it, can you go ahead and hit that like button for us? and subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat, check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.